Yeah. Um, I still personally feel like T1 here should have an edge, especially considering how comfortable the plays that they have have looked on these champions. I think when you're when you're talking about yeah the amount of uh, skill that you have on the picks that you can see right here, not to mention the fact that Kaiser is busted at the moment. Oh yeah. Um, this composition does look good, but I'm glad that you you did mention that there is a lot of power uh, on the side of Nongshim. I think the the Renekton's just a it's mind boggling, right? Imagine Gangplank. Imagine Gangplank in this position. Yeah. Oh my God, he hard smashes the lane and also provides Peel with his cannon barrage, global pressure with the cannon barrage, like. An incredible pick. Also, Rich is pretty good at the champion. Camille also fits quite nicely. You can run 4-1 in that case, and they have a great four as uh, as wave clear with the victor, oh, of yeah. course. Yeah. Um, there are so many options that could, that would not have been Renekton in this case. Hi, sir. As uh, Peanut just uh, mowing through his jungle. Both of these oh. junglers actually going pretty quickly as LM wanting to try and deny this, and Peanut has actually no idea as he kites his way in. There's the watch out Eep that he has to definitely watch out for. And this is going to be a steal. Peanut already on the back foot. This could be disastrous. Oh, he's going to go in. Is he? Yeah. No, he's, oh, maybe. Gets the ward Adam doesn't down. have smite. Yeah, no smite available, but watch out. Eep does enough damage, apparently. Dorks, I mean, Callum's starting off really well here. Baker goes in. Yep, gets the flash out of bay. Fantastic trade. And uh, Ellen didn't even need to show himself either. I don't know whether Kellen has been spotted on exactly this brush. As a uh, carrier. Thinking about coming through. Look, should be the Rift Scuttler locked down for Peanut. There's carrier face checks. Hook is going to miss onto Ellen though, as Kellen's in a lot of trouble. Faker doesn't have the Emperor's Divide, but they're not going to need it. That's going to be Zayas picking up first blood. Welcome to the LCK, my friend. Able to grab first blood. Faker, I'm Thanks hoping up. that this sees the punishment that it deserves. And uh, we're going to see it, like that decision not made. Good play back there, but Kellen's still dead. Ellen comes in, steals that one away, and uh, Dr. Um, he's just this is definitely a series for Faker to have his 600th game opportunity. Is uh, Zayas possibly in trouble here as Peanut's trying to lock him down. The Naba coming on through. Really good game sense from Zayas to make sure that he can get towards Faker, who flashes. Oh, and no! Zayas is still alive, and they're asleep! It's a double kill for the Lilia! Make and very questionable place thus far does not look like they're doing that at all. They're pushing the envelope constantly as Carrier goes in. Whoa, the big on, big old flash forward as there's the Gravity Storm. Does do decently, but the stun down, and that is a very, very dead bay. The watch out Eep doesn't necessarily work, but thanks. Uh, okay. Yeah, you know, just fine. taking a lot of free damage. It's gonna be okay, has a lantern. As another Solar Flare lands, Doc Darm has to Feather Storm, Flash, Cleanse, everything. All of the buttons now on cooldown. Out and Faker does a lot of damage. A conquering Sands was terrifying as all. Oh, that was not the time to blade caller. Doc Dom does manage to flash out, but in goes Gumiyushi. And Elam's going to take a nap underneath this turret. Does go golden. That should try and keep him alive, but he's still going to be dead. And that is another engage. The re-engage towards the top side. Bay's going to go down immediately. Peanut now running for the hills. The crocodile going to be in trouble. And the sleep finally does come down. I actually thought Elam used that before, but not actually going to get baited by the stopwatch and had it for exactly when he needed it. And this could just be Baron for T1. Yeah. So, and that's like the feeling that you get in every single lane, right? Like, it's not bad. Isaias, uh, Isaias? Yeah, he uh, might be in a little bit of trouble here as he does get Megana. There is the Nar back. It's going to get rid of three of them for now. We'll see whether he can move fast enough. They're going to bring an extra person as Asterix does go off. In he goes once again. That's the double wall. The sleep comes down. Zayas is unkillable in this game. What the hell was that? Almost the triple kill there as the Empress Divide gets rid of Rich. He flashes on back in. He wants to try and take down Faker, but he just doesn't have enough damage. It's a double kill for the Azir in the end, and this may just be the game. Instead, he turns it around, and T1 is looking a lot better today, Atlas. I think so too. I think they're onto something with this particular roster. As in goes Faker, looking for a bit of damage there onto Kellen. He's free food. Peanut's going to be the same thing. Sort of like the bag of peanuts that you get. And maybe in a different universe, that's where it goes wrong. Right? Yeah. That's where, like, all of a sudden he gets turned around. But instead, they look amazing. He does the most damage in the game, Atlas. <laughs> This is his first LCK game well. ever. This is nutty. And look, he had a he had a great lane. He had a great start. You know, everything did work out for Zayas, but you know they relied on him to to push that victory forward. And he with a lot of kite back in the form of the Jays, the Twisted Fate, a lot of side lane control. This comp can also, uh, at like the, I think the problem with 
the comp that you have here is that if you go for side lanes, you're facing it into a TF. That's a nightmare, right? And if you're going to team fights, you're a dive comp into one of the strongest anti-dive AD carries combined with a fresh. That's not yeah. great. No, I'm uh, I'm a little bit perplexed as to as to this set pick. Seems to be something that Bay is happy to take into uh, Vegas Twisted Fate, and the way I sort of watched this draft was just a, a, a battle for who can get priority early, right? And because yeah. that's what's going to help LM uh, hold on to his relevance. I think that the Jace pick for that reason was a lot better, right? I was uh, calling for things like the Gangplank, things like the, the Camille, but they come online a little bit later. You don't necessarily like uh, smash the lane at level five, for example. Level two Gangplank is terrifying, but- Oh, level one Gangplank is- Yeah, and level remember, one, of you course. Yeah. You saw the lock-in tournament, right? You, oh, saw, yeah. What, yeah, yeah, yeah. you saw what happened to Fudge. Poor guinea pig. But this is, um, it's, it's, I'm not sold on the set pick mid, and we'll just have to see whether Bay has, uh, the correct answers, um, as this match moves forward. Because, you know, Renekton Nidalee does do a lot if they actually get the, uh, the pressure towards the top side, and Jace isn't extraordinarily, uh, safe up there either, and he's going to be shoving most likely. Yeah, for Jace, it's more about deterring, right? Like, if you actually get dove, you're in the rough spot, um, but Rich should not be able to do that unless Peanut helps him, right? Like in Renekton, I don't really expect Rich to be able to take control of the wave and through that find like a big stack of minions, crash it into the turret and then dive that way. Because in the early game, you're not going to get it done. Maybe if you get like a good gank off. So there needs to be so much diversion of attention to this top side. But that makes it fairly predictable. And it's not like the bot side for T1 needs help. Now, if you look at T1's comp, there is, of course, uh, somewhat of a lack of hard engage, right? Like, it's not a perfect comp, but overall, it feels way more well-rounded to me. Yeah, uh, this is also, of course, the power of Voodoo, as a Teddy's probably going to flash. Yeah, is he going to make it? No, he's not. That's going to be first blood going over to Peanut. Right place, right time, and I'm not sure what Teddy was doing. He understands that this wave is going to be pushing towards safety for the Jace. There is a stun that it does come in, but Rich still taking a lot of damage there. So the skies comes in. Elam in a great position as Faker looking for a destiny. Bay wants to get the interrupt and he does so. Faker not going to make it up there. And now T1, they're looking to back away. Bay's going to take the inside track though. It will be a three versus two as they get into the alcove. It's not where you want to be. Isaias goes down. Peanut grabs another kill. Face breaker onto Elam and he has to run for the hills. He does so, gets to safety. The flash out from Peanut. Good hook is going to land onto Bay, but he's pretty tanky right now. And T1 have to walk away with a dead Jace. Uh, Teddy might be able to take this turret actually as Isaias is here. Rich rotates down and Peanut's going to continue his assault on the jungle. There's the showstopper though was Zayas immediately having to flash away, but I don't think it's going to be enough. And Faker, he thought about it, but then he was like, nope, that guy's dead. Deep here. Yeah, and Bay's actually going to say thank you for it. As there's the crash down from Kellen. A lot of flashes as Carrier and Teddy try to get out of there, but Rich turns up into the back line. Teddy immediately is eliminated. Elm now running for the hills as uh, the Void Seeker comes in, and that's going to be it. Doctor picks it up with the Killer Instinct. He may actually die from this one. Immediate cleanse. That was pretty Captain Jack. Liked it, liked it a lot as he supercharges to try and get himself out of the way. Faker's Ignite, not going to be enough, as now Rich finds himself underneath the turret. Faker goes golden. Hook is going to go wide, and the crash down will spell the death of the Twisted Fate, and Nongshim have woken up. Very, very nicely, and turning a lot of what T1's been trying to do against them, as once again, oh, no. Bay's going to find Faker. The Stride Break is going to slow him down, and then Bay grabs the kill with the Showstopper. Oh, look at Bay. He's going to come in from the flank. They don't have vision of him. Yeah, this is really dangerous. Voidseeker does come down. Teddy Featherstorm very, very early as Bay comes on in. There's the flash. Looking for Teddy right now. Carrier is going to be taken down. Teddy finds himself in relative safety, and Bay has to use the showstopper. Uh, not on the Zaya, which is absolutely the target that he was looking for. Blast Cone gets fake at a safety. Zayas is uh, a little bit behind enemy Wait. lines, but he should be okay for the moment. As, uh, oh, no. <gasps> I think they spotted him. There's the Voidseeker as well as Dr. Um, Gonna cancel the back, and Zayas is gonna have to go for a run, I think. As uh, uh, Peanut, he's coming over, everyone collapsing Drake's onto Zayas, who's just like, nah, I'm, I'm getting this. We'll see whether he can actually, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Drake is spawning, like, they, they need to not go on him. It's 25 seconds, you can't give it this, this save point. 
Well, I mean, he does buy a lot of time, like you say. Come in, but Baker doesn't have a lot of damage right now, and Rich is pretty tanky. There's the Dominus. Gold card comes in. Carrier and Teddy are going to be in position. Peanut looking to try and turn up. There's the flash forward. Stun comes down onto Teddy. Immediately, he has to Featherstorm. Gets into melee range with Rich, but will survive for the moment. Not enough to grab the kill. Faker goes in, gets baited by Rich. He does go down. See, because Not even... uh, he's two on ADHS because it's, it's Teddy. And they've yeah, he's Teddy, yep. Funneling a lot. Oh, Teddy. Teddy. Oh, no. What? He just kills him. Doc Dom's just dead and he makes it to safety. This is exactly what we're talking about. The Teddy effect is always going to be there. Oh, definitely. Oh. And that's very scary. But T1 does know what's happening. There comes the engage. Yep, the crash down comes forward. This is a great engage out from Nongshim as Dr. Arm grabs the kill onto Faker, but does have to make his way out of the fight. Teddy at full health as he dashes his way to the side. Elum now getting himself into position. The Haymaker from Bay, not enough to deter Teddy right now, who just Teddy. walks past him. That's going to be enough autos. Elum actually grabs the kill, and now T1 can push forward. Rich will get stunned up, and look at the damage from this Zaya. Rich gets on top of him, but he still had Featherstorm, so Teddy easily able to lock down that kill. And Nongshim, they have to kill this Zaya instantly, otherwise these fights get so much harder. And we see some split calls here. I would love for them to go to Drake. I don't think Peanut is still alive. Don't go for this. He's two levels up. He's still a nidalee that's going to spare you. And they decide to go for the safe play and go for the Drake. And this is what we've been talking about this entire time. Yes, T1 doesn't have great engage, but that doesn't matter when you can play team fights as well as this. Uh, as this. Faker gets blown up at the start of this fight because Kellen goes in really, really deep here. And yes, he finds Faker, but we don't care about Faker. Faker doesn't matter in this scenario. It's all about the men, Teddy. And here we see Carrier and Ellen doing such a stellar job combined with Teddy's use of Guild Force, as well as just his sheer Kyback potential to make this play work somehow, even despite the fact that this was effectively a 4 versus 5 for T1. Yeah. He's just untouched, able to avoid all of the spears. Rich eventually gets on top of him and then gets the bad news that the ulti was still available. So really well played. This is the Teddy in the late game that we were talking about. Sometimes, you know, it feels good when the narratives pay off. Um, <laughs> it certainly does work out. It's still by no means uh, a huge hit. Is now just clearing out all of the vision around the Baron. And Zaya's just going to push this top lane. Baker, Destiny almost available once again. As he does find a decent little stun there on the Kellen, who takes what? off his health bar. Peanut just executes Zaius. Not going to be able to find oh, the flash for free as Elam wants to try and take this one, but he is behind two levels like you were talking about. Stun comes in. There's the Magnet Storm crash down as Kellen gets a really good engage. Teddy finds himself again in a great position as Dr. Arm gets behind him, but he's not able to execute. Carrier does fall down. Peanut grabs another kill, but still five members of Nongshim are... Closing in on T1. Faker and Elam are going to have to try and protect Teddy. Can the Fountain Laser actually make it work? Good stun. He's going to land and he will fall down. Rich grabs the kill. That is Elam immediately falling afterwards. Zaius wants to try and be a hero, but he's not going to be able to. It's a double kill for Doc Dom. This will be the Baron. And looking much better. Teddy! What the heck? He just comes out this game. Now they're looking for another one. Rich going to get stunned up as Elam's just going to boop him. They do manage to get him onto the box, but he's very tanky. And Carrier takes a lot of damage, but T1 have still won this fight, even if Rich gets out of here as Kellen dives on forward. The Magnet Storm is activated, but unfortunately, he's just going to go down. And T1, we'll see whether we get the inner wild crocodile as uh, Peter going to get taken. Sorry, yeah. Taking that about half health as Teddy feather storms. Can he actually get into position? Oh, the face break is so good out of Bay. Fake is going to go down and Bay gets right on top of the rest of the members of T1. And I have a feeling this is just it. That's the ace. And that's going to be the game. Nongshim will bring us to Faker's 600. Continuously, Nongshim have been able to find these flanks again and again and again. And this time it pays off. As you said, an insane phase break coming up from Bay, but it's rich with the teleport that already secures yeah. it. And Look, I think they'd, be, they'd still be in first place uh, if we were best of ones, because they pretty consistently yeah. win that first game as, oh my God, Peanut's damage. That is repugnant. He just, he dominated that game from start to finish. He was 100% kill contribution, I believe at like 30 minutes into the game. I, like Peanut, like, that was a masterclass in how to decimate the jungle and look.
free of all of this lockdown and quarantine situation, then you'll have the full-fledged experience. But it's definitely going to be an ease-in process. Don't necessarily know how long it's going to take, but uh, I think it works. As we'll uh, we that. are going to be hopping into the game, guys. So uh, without further ado, let's um, have a look at these compositions once again, as it is going to be the Olaf into the Udyr. Udyr has been pretty awful so far today. He's lost every single game that he's had. But it's Peanut's birthday, and let's see whether he can turn things around after his hard carry Nidalee uh, pop off in game two. Uh, I really like to see either of these teams take a win. It's weird, right? Like, I think if T1 loses this one as well, that just that just breaks breaks a team, right? Like, there's so much pressure on these guys. You were so dominant in game number one. And if now, you... Peanut's going to show up here. He will be in full vision, and this is the immediate moment for Alan. Might go for a dive there. I do feel like it's a little bit risky. Yeah, B drop comes in. That's going to be the tumble. Gets them out of the way. Only level five, so no solar flares as the teleports come on in. Carrier trying to get as much CC as possible and actually gets the first blood. It's a disastrous Rich just delivered under the turret. Kubayushi grabs a kill and it's all going wrong for Nongshim. They get one kill onto Carrier, but it still looks really good. The ulti comes down, but Kubayushi locks down the kill. It's a double for the Vayne. And now Faker rotates in, looks to try and lock down Doctarm where he can. The Seraphine trying to run as Faker's already moving over to try and kill her as he takes down the Kaiser. And now Kellen's going to be dead as well. That's a big old thumbs up for Zayas. A double kill for the man in the mid lane. And Elm's just farming mid, trying to do what he can. And it's a disaster for Nongshim. That they overcommit this much is just... That oh, should never happen. We're going for it again as Carrier doesn't have Aftershock anymore. He's likely to die here as the beat gets dropped. And that is going to be Leona doing the same. And uh, look, they're going to be moving a bit faster. They're going to have some uh, CDR on their ultimates. That's good news as Bay. He's going to turn back up. He doesn't have a uh, flash, remember. Scatter the weak is good, but there's a Ragnarok. And that is going to be a very <laughs> dead Syndra. Faker comes over oh, for the oh, support. Love. And this... Uh, Gumiushi needs to be really respectful here. I think that he's... Yeah, he's... Oh, yeah, he's yep, dead. there's the ulti. Oh. Kellen finds it. No! Not able to get the extra spell as Carrier does turn up. And it looks like with Olaf coming down, wow. Gumiushi is going to be able to even get the minion wave as well. Voidsick... Oh, God, I was scared. Okay, in he goes. Doc Dom gets the cleanse and will be able to keep himself alive. Right. Yeah, um, keep your eye on that one. See whether the shockwave is going to be pivotal as this is going to be our fight. Nongshim do have Cloud Soul point after this one. If they do manage to lock this one down, even levels on our junglers. Let's see who's going to win this poke war. The orbs coming on in. You can see Bay just trying to get as many of them on the ground as possible. Make sure that, that Scatter of the Week is as scary as it can be. He's throwing through as many as he can. There are so many buttons being pressed and now Rich pulls the trigger. That's a triple knock up and in goes the charm as well. But T1, they keep themselves in it. Shockwave only lands onto Peanut who soaks a lot of damage and will be taken down. Now Gumayushi trying to take the fight into his own hands and Bay gets back to the rest of his team. I try to it guide is... his way thin. Uh, oh, Dom. oh my God, just gets chunked. The teleport to come forward as well from T1. Got now Doctor, I'm going to have to get out. Yeah, exactly. They're looking for this one. Azaeus body slams over, gets the slow under Doctor. Immediately that gets cleansed. Kellen's going to get slowed down. In goes Carrier. Finds Doctor on the backside who has to kill her instinct and flash to get himself out. Faker flashes forward, tries to find Doctor. Doesn't quite have enough damage. And it looks like Nongshim are going to get themselves out of this one. But man. Yeah, that flash is pretty really valuable. Yeah. Well, we're going to look for it once again as there's the shockwave. Doesn't do too much as Peanut's able to soak a lot of that damage. That's the Ornhorn from Rich on the backside. Carrier looking to try and make his way out as this Olaf is massive. Peanut will be taken down. Zayas here, another brick wall that Nongshim have to get through. And it looks like they're running out of resources in order to do so. And you saw, this is what happens. Dokdam doesn't have his summoner spells and it means he cannot get into these fights as effectively. There is no smite. Yeah, Peanut's dead. This Baron starting to go down pretty quickly. This will be a 4v5. We'll see whether Baron is going to work out for Nongshim as there are low health bars. Gumiyushi's is at full as now Rich gets body slammed. Doesn't have the Ornhorn, remember, as they will be just taking down this Baron. It's the Olaf able to lock it down and Rich just too far forward. Unfortunate for the top laner of Nongshim and they couldn't pull the trigger. They didn't have enough triggers to pull. Rich has started to dole out some of these items, so the gold lead is going to mean less and less as the game goes on. 
As Peanut, possibly caught in the wrong position, takes a blast cone, but gets body slammed for it. Slowed down there is now Gumiushi looking to get on top of him. Killer Instinct comes in as Dokdam moves out of the way, cleanses the barrel, goes completely wide, but Peanut still going to be taken down. Now Elam finds himself in the front line. Carrier trying to be a hero as Dokdam will be taken down on the back end. Rich trying to flash away as Gumiushi takes position on the front line. Elam gets rid of the Seraphine in like one or two axes. She is so squishy. Bay's going to get slowed down, and I think that this is going to be the game. It's a great stopwatch from Bay, but unfortunately, he's dead as an afterthought. I set now on these Nexus turrets. The 600th game of the living legend in the mid lane, Faker. A justified win, 41 here after... It was his birthday a little while ago. Unfortunately for Peanut, it's his birthday today, but was unable to come away with the win. And uh, this is your post-game graph. Some pretty understandable numbers. Unfortunate for Peanut to not do too much, but as a new deer, it's very difficult. Uh, if you fall behind at any point, um, to be able to make that one work. And you saw Nongshim, they tried to set up for that, uh, you know, that, that gold lead that would be just linear and move towards their victory. And you can see as soon as it makes that switch, that's that dive on the bottom side, which unfortunately...